what the hell, Phil? We leave for three months and we can't get back in the rotation at the Podcast Doctor Studio uh-huh. in Orlando, Florida. You've replaced us. It's true. We like you gave us the scraps. The, scra- the scraps. So Hold we, up. We <laughs> got a cancellation. We, we got a cancellation. Oh. Somebody canceled. So you've completed. Oh. Your, you don't even need Skip Town All Stars uh-huh. anymore. You are doing so well. Uh huh. He is. We leave for three months and he can't. Thanks a lot, Phil. In. We uh-huh. see how it is. I feel so terrible. So fair weather. Uh, so <laughs> if. If you want a studio, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> come to Orlando, Florida and go to the podcast That's doctor. Right. But you're going to have to wait. <laughs> That's right. Get on the waiting list. No, yeah, there's no waiting list. It's just for us because Phil feels scorned because mm-hmm. we left sir, for so long. Yeah, oh so he's blocking us out. Anyway, all that to say, it's good to be home. It's good to see you. It good is. to see you guys, too. Put yourself on camera, Phil. Show it's good kids. to see you guys. There good you to go. see you guys. Yeah. There you you have been... Yes. Uh, you while we've been on the road yeah. a lot of people have asked about you phil yeah. a lot of people so um yeah like it'd be like how are your travels how's phil yep. <laughs> like, they love phil everybody loves when you say well could i live there uh-huh <laughs> well that's a legitimate question because it you guys is. be naming some of these cities that a i've never heard of and b are probably snowy and three <laughs> <laughs> it's just you you guys are eating some really weird food so i'm like hmm oh yeah does yeah. somebody yeah. like me really like live there or not? <laughs> those are great questions and everyone seems to love them so uh yeah. yeah so we missed you we did miss you we're excited to be back we are and we have a little girls trip episode this week denise went off to the netherlands of where was it zion in utah i did i went to zion yep Let's crack it open. Check the mic and make sure it sound right, boy. Hey, listeners. Ever wonder what it would be like to blow up your comfort zone at the tender age of 50? Well, we did just that. When our last kid went off to college, we hit the road in search of a new hometown. Now we bounce from city to city and bring you along for the ride. This is the Skip Town All-Stars podcast. What's up, All-Stars? Welcome back for another edition of Skip Town. We are psyched to be back at the Podcast Doctor Studios in Orlando, Florida. See, you already forgot where you were. It's been so long. I know. You Keep already forgot where already. you were. You're like, where, where are we at? I had to think about it. I'm like, oh, what's the name of this place again? <laughs> it's it's been... going to be back, Phil, as we said earlier. How are you doing, Trixie? I'm doing great. I'm doing great. Um, it has been almost, it's been, all, it's been three months almost. It's been three months. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it is really nice to get back. I know. It is. And uh, for the record, I'm just going to say to both of you right now, uh, there's this shirt is a touch tight in my midsection. So if you hear a snap pop (laughs) at any point when I'm laughing during this podcast, we're just going to keep going. Okay, we're not. I'm in the process of fat shaming myself right now to continue to go to the gym. And I'm happy that I got back into this shirt. I just don't know how long it's going to last if I if I get too mobile. Oh no! Just what kind? What kind of buttons is it? Is it like the one you actually button, or like a snap button? No, they're pearl snaps. Oh, yeah. cowboy style. Those are the fat boy ones. They are. <laughs> they are. You might pop. And it's not a stretchy shirt. Oh, so honey, you might pop. Don't know. <laughs> don't sneeze pop. either. So anyway, I'm really focusing for the next hour on keeping my core Suck tight. Suck it in. That's right. <laughs> anyway. Uh, This week, we have a great episode, I'm sure, because Denise is going to narrate us through. Uh, Denise went on spring break for the first time in her life, Phil. I did. I never used to go on a spring break, ever. Yeah. What does spring break mean to to y'all? Because back when I was younger, I would watch y'all on TV. (laughs) Y'all, y'all made spring break, spring break. So friend, we have a friend whose his name is Kip. And we compare you to him a lot because you're like a young Kip. You know, back when I was young, I had a friend just like you. You were the prototype for my buddy. <laughs> All right. And uh, his quote is, when black people go out, they smoke a little reefer. They sip a little crevassier. When white kids go out, somebody dies. <laughs> <laughs> that is so true. <laughs> it, is. it really is. So uh-huh. anyway. Uh, yeah. So we, we, we made Spring Break notorious in some ways, didn't we? Yeah. MTV. Yes, one hundred percent. Yeah, uh, my spring break was not quite like MTV's Miami spring break or Daytona Beach spring break. Mine was a little different. I went to Utah and I went to Zion National Park. But you are not even going to mention my sweatshirt. No, I'm totally going to mention your sweatshirt. I want to know why it says "I love you." Say it back. Well, um, 
the reason I wore this is because we're doing the Utah edition and the sweatshirt is what it's a brand that all the kids are wearing now. It's called Lonely Ghost. And oh. I got it as a gift from my girlfriend for Christmas. And the girl who makes these sweatshirts is from Provo, Utah. And her Instagram is like insane. Like she has 10 million followers, her TikTok the same. She's like, she writes these cute little sweatshirts, um, saying, sorry, these cute little sayings. Like, yeah. like a real popular one is um, text me when you get home. <laughs> oh. But it's like this sexy girl who's like has a phone in her hand. And okay. uh, yeah, so it's like these cute little sayings with like graphic um, designs on it. Not like graphic. You know what I mean? Like, what do you, it's a graphic tee, but on a sweatshirt. You know what I mean? Yeah, no, totally. Yeah. And like the back of the sweatshirt, you can't see it, but it says a hundred ways to say I love you. And it's, and literally there's a hundred, it's like one to a hundred different ways to tell someone you love them. Like, oh, yeah. like I like that. So I bet you, and I, I haven't seen, one. I haven't one. seen. See? Oh, yeah, go ahead. Spin around. Oh, wait, hold on. Wait, so here we go. Boop. There we go. What Come over say? to your right a little bit. Oh, this way. Yep. Just slide over. There you go. All right, I can't. Yeah. I can't read the, the list as much. Uh, I but miss you. How was your day? I'll wait for you. Thank you. Want to go on a walk? Is have you eaten up there? Uh, it's got to be. <laughs> it's, it's got, but anyway, so um, this yeah. So I thought if I'm doing the Utah edition, I'm gonna wear this sweatshirt you because my train. I was gonna ask you. I love you. Say it back. Is that like something from um, Valentine's Day or something like that? But no, it's uh, so. Is this a Gen Z trend or oh, millennial yeah. trend? It's Gen Z. Oh, yeah. look at you. Yeah. So if Going you're young. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. So if you're uh if you're listening to us and you're not watching us on YouTube, then you cannot see the sweatshirt, but it's a green sweatshirt that says I love you say it back. Mm -hmm. And the back of it is 100 different ways to say I love you and it's very it's a very trendy brand. So I'm in, I'm I'm trending right now. You are. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Um you're trending SLC style. That is like an oxymoron in some ways, I feel. A kind trend of. SLC style. A little bit. Yeah. Yeah. But, but at any rate, uh, so we need to talk about this spring break of yours. Yeah. I want to know, because I don't know, and I wasn't even, it wasn't one of our trips where I planned a trip, and now all of a sudden you're planning a trip. You legit, like, we were on the road, <laughs> and you bounced. I did. And I, I was like, what the hell? I'm like, in the middle I'm of like our... driving through Kentucky by myself uh -huh. yeah. out of nowhere. So how did all of this come about? <clears throat> okay. So James and I went glamping at the beginning of our road adventure in 2022. Define glamping. Uh, glamping is fancy camping. We talked about this with Phil like one time. We did. Um, we went to this place called Under Canvas and it's super high end tents. They are made of canvas, but the furniture in it is from like West Elm. Like, you know, there's no, there's no Ikea furniture in there. Uh, the bedding is all down it's bedding. It's Coleman furniture. What is Coleman? Coleman camping gear. Remember oh yeah, Coleman no, yeah, no. Coleman, there's Coleman coolers. There is no Coleman anywhere around. Like no. it's going to be that. Like what's the Yeti thousand dollar coolers? Oh, right, you, yeah. Right. So uh, every tent has their own bathroom. So there's running water. Uh, it's very bougie camping. That's that's what it is, yeah. and they call it glamping. So it's glamorous camping. And we we did a deep dive <clears throat> on this. I think around episode nine or ten. Back, yeah. Back when we were young puppies. <laughs> doing our podcast. On <laughs> it the is road. true. It is I true. It was, I think it was, I don't know. I'll put a graphic up so everybody yeah. can see it. But. So, um, so we enjoyed it so much when we were there that we said to each other, we have to bring our girls back. So the way that this spring break trip to yeah. Zion came about was I was talking to a girlfriend on the phone, my friend, Lori, who, um, uh, lives in Los Angeles still. And we were talking about getting together and seeing each other and how we could make it work. And then I'm not really sure how it came up in the conversation, but I said to her, oh, gosh, if you can ever check out, you know, under Canvas, that company mm -hmm. and one of their glamping locations, you know, we did this in Zion. So one thing led to another. And she called me like four hours later and said, hey, how about we get all of the girls together? We'll try to coincide their spring breaks and we'll do glamping again in Zion. You were already there. You know the layout of the place. Let's just all of us do it. And you wanted to bring the girls anyway. Mm -hmm. I was like, that's an awesome idea. And when idea. did this happen? Because I think, Are you, did I you know. sit on this for a while? I said. This was in the works when? Okay. When we were in Connecticut? When, where? No, this is before Christmas. Oh. <laughs> 
Did I not tell you? What the hell? <laughs> no, you did I not. I guess I did not tell you. So yeah, you it was. You saw the bill. Yeah. So it was before Christmas. And then, um, you know, I put a deposit down on the place. It's not cheap. So if you want to go there and you want to get a tent that's like considered a suite, it's $500 a night. Mm. So it's really pricey. But the experience is so amazing that you're actually paying for the experience. You're not paying for the accommodations because you're not really in your tent. And if you remember when you and I went, we went in August of 2022. It was a trillion degrees. Yeah, it was like 175,000 degrees. Yeah. So we weren't in our tent at all. But the whole surroundings is so beautiful. And where they're situated, Zion is right across the way. Like when I say that, like you open up your tent and there's Zion. Like yeah. you can see it they're right in the, in the valley right before the, the gateway, the mouth. Yes. That side of Zion. And their whole area of where they have this location has trails itself. So it's like, you don't even have to go to Zion. If you didn't want to, you can just go to under a canvas and have a wonderful time. And they have a huge area where they even bring in live singers. You can make s'mores and you talk to other campers. Yeah, bonfires. And it's incredible. Their kitchen is amazing. Just everything about it is so good. So you pay for the experience. That's what I'm telling you. So it's $500 a night, but you're paying not for the tent only you're paying for the experience. And you don't have to pitch your own tent. You're paying to not pitch your own tent oh. and sleep on a really nice bed inside of a really nice tent. Exactly. Yeah. So, so um, y'all, wait, hold up. You paying five hundred dollars to sleep outside? Yeah. We're Pretty much five hundred dollars <laughs> to pretend you're homeless. What the heck? <laughs> Is that a white person thing? Oh yes. Black folks don't do that. No. They would. They wouldn't even do. I know black folks okay. generally don't go camping, but they won't do glamping either. Hell no. <laughs> Why are you going to pay $500 to sleep outside? There were no black people there. And no AC? (laughs) I think he's right. There were no black. No, there's no AC. That's proof. Yeah. No. Uh Uh-huh. Yeah. So um, another white person thing. (laughs) Uh Um, So anyway, so we thought also if we're going to go in March, it would not be a thousand degrees. So it was like everything about it was just perfect. Yeah. So we even looked up the weather last year. And the weather in March at Zion during that time was like high 50s. So we're okay. like, this is perfect. It's we so chilly at night, but very uh, like pleasant. Like long the sleeves, day. like long yeah. sleeves during the day. Maybe if you want to wear a little knit cap or something, but it's perfect. You can go hiking during the day. You could hang out during the day at 50, high 50s. Like that's probably perfect. not going to go in the narrows at that temperature. No, it's funny you mentioned that. So James and I did a hike in Zion called the Narrows. And what it really is, is you're walking through a um, creek of water and it's narrows because you're... Between two mountains, basically. Yeah, the cliffs on both sides the whole way through. Yes. And um, and there's water that spans. It could be at your ankle or it could be up to your knee. And we went, like I said, in August of 2022, and the water was really cold. So we talked about doing the Narrows. It's so funny you mentioned that. And Lori was like, uh, don't you think the water's going to be a little cold? And I was like, <laughs> oh, my gosh. I didn't even think of that. I yeah. said, yeah. So we're, we ixnayed the arrows. So, like, no. Uh, <clears throat> so we checked the weather. You said that in true pig Latin, by the way. You said... We ixnayed the arrows. And that's exactly how you would say it. <laughs> I did, didn't I? Pig Latin. You know what pig Latin is, Phil? Yes. Okay. Yes. So I did say it perfectly. Sure that was also ixnayed the arrows. Thing. Yeah, I totally ixnayed the arrows. <laughs> you did. Uh-huh. <laughs> that, was, um, that was perfect. That was pure you Chicago. Speak, that was pure Chicago. You should speak in pig Latin. Do you you know, would be grammatically correct everywhere. All right, I'll try that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> See how it goes. Yeah. Everybody be like, who's this Jar Jar Binks lady? <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. So anyway, uh, a week before we leave, there's a snowstorm of Bruin. Now we've had this. A Bruin? A Bruin. Okay. We've had, Someone's been to Tennessee recently. <laughs> Go on. We have had these plans now for four months. And we call them to ask them. Will they and give I've us- known about them for two weeks. Go on. Yeah. Uh, We call and ask, can we get a refund? Like, you know, like, what is your policy? Mm -hmm. And they said, no, I'm sorry, we don't give refunds. uh, But don't worry. You know, when you get there, we'll have activities planned and and the storm might blow over. And we actually thought the same thing. Like, this storm might blow over. This is how every horror movie starts. (laughs) Well, yeah. It turned into that. So uh, the this day- is also why black people don't, aren't, aren't, yeah, they don't do that either. 
oh, horror movies? Yeah. yeah. Oh, I know. I know that. <laughs> For, first Line of Trouble, we out. That's why we ain't in the horror movies. Like, Get Out is such a great movie. Yeah. Black actors, black director. Mm-hmm. Right? But that's not a traditional slasher movie. It's not. That's true. He's it's right. not a slasher movie. Mm-hmm. There's so no Freddy Krueger. Psychological Kruger. thriller. Yeah. It's a pretty thrilling ride. Anyway. And it was still a white person that's caused it, so. It is true. <laughs> <laughs> Um, okay. So back to back. Zion. Yeah. Okay. So uh the day before it the storm is coming, right? So we're all kind of like, all right, what are we gonna do? Because we're outside in a tent. Like, what are we gonna do? It's a snowstorm, a legit snowstorm. It's not a rainstorm, it's a snowstorm. Mm-hmm. Let's see what let's see what the day holds. We get in the car. It is snowing on the way there. Nice. So I have Lori call on the way there and say, Hey, it's snowing. Like it's snowing. Um, are you? Did you have gear? Because you brought this like little Lululemon puffer or something like that. Is that for, food? Like, what is that? The food for the for the during the darkest days of winter in Connecticut, you had the worst coat on possible. Oh, what were you wearing? Okay, my coat wasn't even Lululemon. Lululemon would have been like even warmer. My coat was like a Nordstrom fake puffer. Oh it was like not even a real puffer jacket. No, so I was like, not prepared. It was, a, it was the LA like November puffer. Uh huh. That's oh exactly what God. it was. I was not prepared. I was triple layered when I got there. I had my 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 Nordstrom puffer, which is like a fake puffer. I had my my sweatshirt underneath it. I had a long t shirt underneath that. I had leggings on underneath my. Lululemon sweatpants. Like <laughs> I was not prepared. I was not prepared. So we're on our way there and we think to ourselves, look, Salt Lake City has no snow right now. The weather is like in the 60s. We'll just turn the car around and go back to Salt Lake. Okay, they won't give us a refund, but maybe they'll give us a credit. Like just give us a credit because what can you do in a tent when it's snowing? Right. We call, we ask for a credit. The girl says we don't give credits. So I know. <sighs> I know. Lori was like, really? Well, what are we going to do snowing in a tent? And she said, you know, we have wood burning stoves and um, (laughs) in a tent. Awesome. You know where the story is headed. Anyway, let's just say this sounds like your personal worst nightmare. Yeah. Let's just say it hasn't even begun yet. Nothing worked out. Hold on. Hold on. Sorry. I hate something. (laughs) I saw the number. You got four minutes and 57 seconds to finish this story. This story is too long. Okay, needless to say, let's My just fault. say how this story ended with a one star Google review from the Skip Town All Stars. Okay, so yeah. let's talk about what led up to that. Um, you explained what get glamping is. You know what you were expecting. Uh-huh. You explained that they were not budging on giving. No. So you roll up there. It's snowing. Uh huh. They're not prepared. Because they told us, we're prepared. We're going to have a lot of activities in the main tent. We're prepared. There was no preparation. You know what the activity was in the main tent when we got there? Because you can't go to your tent. It's freezing. We could see our breath in our tents. What about the At $500 a night. That's after the the wood burning stove had been burning for two hours. And the guy that was in the tent, I, I was not nice. I was, mean, like the guy that was in the tent. Was the, act- was the activity digging out of the snow? I was like, yeah, I was like all right, we got, we got some shovels. How, how deep is snow? <laughs> no, it's the snow ended up turning to rain. No, the snow ended up turning to oh, rain. Oh, so it's sleet. So that you know, it's sleet. So everything's oh, nice. mud. So now you're in mud. You're okay. at $500 so a now night. Now you're in cold, muddy snow. Yeah. And there's no black people anywhere. Okay, because they're smart. I don't. I don't follow. I don't know where black people would be able to help you out of cold, muddy snow. No, but okay. Phil said. Phil said black people don't make those bad decisions to go. It's true. Can't, yeah, to it's go true. to go play homeless. If, okay. Yeah, at five hundred dollars a night. All right. So anyway, so uh, when the guy came to show us how to use this wood burning stove, I said, "Is this going to warm up our tent quickly? Because we're freezing. You can see your breath in the tent." Oh yeah. You are going to be so warm. That's what he said. (laughs) And? We saw our breath the entire time we're there. It was so cold at night that when you turned your face on the down pillow that was probably $100, um, it was cold. Like if you missed the spot that your face was in for a few hours and you hit the cold part of the pillow, it felt like ice. You need a my pillow guy pillow warmer. No, I do not. No, okay. I do not. Anyway. And uh, anyway, so yeah, so it was really chilly. So it what was about a, in the main tent. Oh, I, I, I'm so sorry. I didn't finish what I was starting to tell you. Yeah. We got there and the main activity, you know, I'm, ex- I'm like, okay, this place is fun. This place is fun. They're going to have some great activities lined up. She told me on the phone that they were going to have great activities lined up. 
they handed you a trivia sheet, front and back, all about national parks. <laughs> oh, nice. That was the activity. You fill out the sheet and you hand it in. So they, gave, so they gave you homework. They did. They gave you homework. Yep. They wow. gave, they, I paid to have homework. Yeah. Okay. And then they had umbrellas and all the umbrellas you had to rent. You had to rent an umbrella at a $500 a night place. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. Cause you have to walk to your tent. Now some, they didn't just take your ID or anything like that. Like you legit had to pay for it. How much? How much? Are the I didn't even ask. Just, when I saw that, um, I was so on fire. I didn't even ask. And then and this is what day one. Oh, this is day one. This, this is, is hour three. Hour three. Yeah. So okay. I walk into the main tent that everybody is supposed to be enjoying, and they're running outside and bringing tables and chairs in and wiping them off for people. And I'm like. You knew the snowstorm was coming. I knew the snowstorm was coming a week ago and you're just now doing this. Like right. I was, I was Karen. There, I literally turned into Karen because oh, I said, it was, I'm standing this there. This is why there are no black people there. Go on. <laughs> so I literally <laughs> stood there and I said, why are you doing this now? Mm. And no one answered. They just like went and did it. And so I was like, this makes no sense. contingency plans were lacking. Oh, for sure. So then I wrote a, you know, I wrote a not sternly a, worded letter. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Do you okay. have the review with you? I do. Do you want to hear it? Of course, I want to hear that thing. <laughs> Break it out. I am happy I mean, to oblige. I mean, we still get the dynamics of everybody and everything, but go ahead, read the review. Oh man, I wish Did I you... had. I wish I had my other board because I would have had some super cool like music for that. Oh yeah, <laughs> some like angry music. Oh well, <laughs> never mind. I'll just provide the anger. I'll lay, I'll lay some in, Phil. <laughs> all right, all right. Uh, so anyway, so here's my one star review. By the way, my brother who like complains about everything, um, was so upset that I left a one-star review. You know what he said to me? He goes, which brother? George. Oh. He goes, why would you leave them a one-star review? And I go, because they deserved it. He goes, do you know how hard it is? How hard it is to come back from a one-star review? He said, their score could have been perfect. Now you just brought it down to a (laughs) 4.7. He literally said that. And I go, I don't care. Okay. So here's what I wrote. Disclaimer, colon, Make 100% sure that you are not booking your trip during inclement weather. Mm. We visited under Canvas Scion two years ago and loved it so much, we decided to bring our two daughters and two of our friends. Unfortunately, a winter storm was going to hit the day we arrived and continue for that weekend. We called under Canvas before our trip. They were not willing to give us a refund or credit us for a different weekend. When we conveyed our concern for what our stay would look like under these conditions, they assured us there would be plenty of activities to do in their quote unquote main tent. Mm. When we arrived, we were greeted with a single sheet of trivia questions about national parks that you filled out and handed in. That was the activity for day one. The tents did have wood burning stoves, but the stoves did not keep the tents as warm as they had assured us. You could see your breath in the tent the entire time. (laughs) Okay. To add insult to injury, if you needed an umbrella, it was a downpour on our first day. You could rent one from under canvas at $500 a night. That was a kick in the shins. I could go on and on about all the ways in which they weren't prepared for this weekend, but I will just stop here and say, you stay at under canvas for the experience. If the weather doesn't allow for a wonderful experience and under canvas isn't willing to issue a refund, or a credit for a different time, then it's their responsibility to create that experience. Shame on you under canvas for your greedy policies and your lack of ingenuity to accommodate your travelers that came far and wide to spend time at your location. What an enormous disappointment and waste of money. Signed, Denise. Yeah. So whenever I leave a review, I do a little research because I want to know how they're going to respond. So I did a little recon before I left this review. Uh Uh-huh. I saw other one-star reviews. What's the other, what's the tone of Under Canvas's response when they get a poor (laughs) review? Tell us. We're all waiting. Uh, Well, you know, it's more like, I can't really, I want to say what I want to say, but I can't say it. I can't say what I want to say. Tell me if I'm right. Is it just your generic corporate, like, non-apology apology? No. You're banned for life. Explosion. <laughs> you got banned from a tent? <laughs> no, it's more like, um, it's more like, um, you know, that whole, I don't like you. And it's like, well, I don't like you too. So, oh, 
Okay, so they get nasty back, huh? Oh, they do. And I was prepared because I looked at the other reviews and I uh -huh. wanted to see how they responded to those people. I was pretty sure I was going to get the response I got. And basically oh, the response- Let's hear it. Oh, do you want to hear it? Yeah, why not? We heard the first part. You want to hear it? Part two. Yes. It's really lengthy. They they did not hold back. Oh my gosh! Okay. They, <laughs> wait, did you it, did you get the, roasted by the, the ten people? I did. Give I us, did. They give, give it right the back to five. me. Give us the top. They five. basically said like, "You come here." They used Chad GPT to roast you. They did. <laughs> I, you know what? I think because they used a it was it was a word salad in so many ways. Like there was a lot of big words, and they were like, "Oh, they were like, you came at us, we're coming at you." Okay, read us a couple lines. Okay. Um, I apologize. Your stay at Under Canvas was not what you were expecting. This is where they go deep. Under Canvas provides outdoor accommodations that inspires connection with extraordinary places by enhancing access to the outdoors. Did you get any of that? Yeah, they're basically like, we provide a tent and the outside stuff is up to you. Mother Nature is absolutely an element in this experience and one that we are not able to control. True. I am so sorry the weather was not ideal during your stay. We do everything in our power to make sure guests are comfortable during their stay, regardless of the weather. Our cancellation policy clearly states that cold or inclement weather will not permit um, will not permit refund for cancellation, unless the company deems the conditions make staying with us unsafe. unsafe. And your conditions were not unsafe. Okay, they were just not ideal. They were just yeah uncomfortable. Okay, here's what's interesting. In one of the reviews that somebody left they said how they drove from Arizona. And it was like, I think a six hour drive to get mm -hmm. there. And an hour before they arrived, Under Canvas canceled on them for weather. No so way. Under Canvas plays God. So no. they decide if they're going to cancel or not. Okay. I just don't was think- Was it unsafe when this family from Arizona was- He didn't say whether I'm it was unsafe. I'm just playing devil advocate. He here. just said, he didn't say whether it was unsafe. He said that he drove six hours to be greeted with uh, uh, a text message or phone call or whatever it was. I think it was an email. And he's like, they didn't even bother to call me. He's like, I, I didn't know till I got there that my can't, my reservation was canceled. Mm. He's like, I'm in Zion now. Where do I go? So, okay. But what- And they went on and on. And they said, oh, we don't rent umbrellas. So we don't know what you're talking about. And then they said like, uh, well, was sorry, the activity nice. wasn't uh, up to your standards. You know, they just like, mm. they were basically like- I'm yeah, you know, go jump in a lake. <laughs> they were like, go take your five hundred dollars a night go and go do jump a in a lake. Plunge. Yeah, like we don't care. Like there's so many people wanting to okay. come here, we don't care. But there are going to be people who listen to this and say, "Lady, you went camping in the winter. What did you expect?" I took my chances with a March date. That is true. I got burned, but I also think that when you're selling an experience at $500 a night, you should have some leeway. Even the Four Seasons has leeway. Every every luxurious resort has a contingency of some sort. Um, usually they require a cancellation within 24 hours. The best of the best hotels have a contingency. We all, like we know people True. who've gone to some of these resorts and have had things pop up and they're willing they should have given us a credit. I didn't want a refund at that point. I just wanted a credit. Let me enjoy the weekend at your experience because that's what it is. It's an experience. So you're right, lady. I did go camping in March. And so I took a risk for sure. But when you're offering an experience, have some leeway with it. And you can't pretend, you can't, you can't be God. You can't decide when the weather is bad and you cancel. No, it can't work like that. Okay. Well, it can but I'm going to leave you one star. It obviously star. does. <laughs> I'm going to leave you one star. Okay, you got one star. So uh, you And here, I check it every day, and it's still the top. <laughs> it's, oh, it's still, still, still the, the top, top review. One. It's oh still the top review. <laughs> You're going to ride this out. I'm kind of just like surprised they haven't had a coworker or one of the employees leave a review to bounce that down. Like, I can't believe it's still at the top of the reviews for Google. For Google. Mm. Well, okay, so you were there how many days then? Because this is just the first day. Three. And you slept at night. Tell me what the sleeping experience was. Like. Was Horrible. it frigid cold? Yeah, was, you like, could see your the breath. The wood burner didn't work. You, well, the word you, it stops burning the wood when nobody's tending oh, you to gotta it. Stoke it all night. Yeah. Of course. So yeah, nobody that's how wanted campfires to, work. Nobody wanted to get up and go pee. <laughs> oh nobody God. wanted to put their feet on the wood floor. Okay, so let's talk about that. The dynamics of the group. Do you know how you, cold the toilet seat is in the <laughs> middle of the night? I can imagine. Yeah, <laughs> they had a toilet seat in the tent. They do. Yeah, they do have toilets in what? the tent. They have yeah. running water. That's a great band name, by the way. Toilets in the tent. Toilets in the tent. <laughs> That's a good name. 
So let's talk about the dynamic then. You were there for three days with uh, our friend Lori from L.A., mm -hmm. our friend Amanda from L.A., mm -hmm. and then uh, child number two, Mia, mm -hmm. who lives in Utah. And she's like, yeah, this is kind of like what it's like, right? Yeah. And Ellie, who's coming from Connecticut, who was probably like, yeah, it's winter. Uh-huh. Uh, Am I right? Or was everybody miserable? Every, no, everyone. Okay, they all made the best of it. I did. Like, nobody really knew how angry I was because I wasn't going to ruin it for all of them. So you bottled mm -hmm. all this up. Oh, inside. Your deep. trivia issues oh, and all that other stuff. I you was, were like. It was inside. It was so deep. And it okay. was hurting. Like, you, I had to get it out. You, I just couldn't wait to write this review. Were you quiet? Because when you go quiet, everybody knows there's something <laughs> wrong, right? Like everybody in our family, everybody in our, fr our friend circle. Um, I I, tr I didn't go as quiet as I wanted. I did complain a little bit. Like when I kept seeing, it's a kid because uh, they broke through and it's me. Oh yeah, so, let's no, put it's Mia fine. on. No. no, put her on real quick. <sighs> Mia, hi, welcome to the Skip Town All-Stars podcast. This is your dad. Yeah, we are, we're, 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 we're recording right now. We're talking about the Zion trip. Tell, tell dad. All stars. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta put her up to the mic. Okay. So uh, what was, uh, you're, you're calling, honey, at the perfect moment, because I was just asking mom to give me an assessment of what her demeanor was the entire time you guys were in Zion. Why, why don't you tell us? Wait, I'm sorry, you broke up a little? Oh, sorry. I, I was saying, uh, I was just asking mom what her demeanor was, knowing that she was miserable at under canvas in Zion. <laughs> And I asked her if she went quiet or if she was complaining. She said she complained a little bit. What's your take, Mia? Tell the people. She didn't really, she didn't really complain at all, to be honest. Oh. Um, she was quiet once, Therapy once works. we called and they said no rain check. That's when um, she got a little quiet on us. And so I was like, oh, shoot. Um, <laughs> but she didn't really complain that much. She only complained when it was like cold in the tent and she needed me to do the fire. Uh huh. I heard you were the fire starter. I was. I was the fire master. Nice. Lava Girl Roots really came out. Nice. Nice. Uh, okay, so uh, your overall take on Under Canvas, would you go back in nicer weather or no? Yeah, for sure. Oh, okay. You can't now. Don't you, leave you... a review because mom just scorched them online. So. Oh, I know. I heard about the review. <laughs> All right, Mia, we're going to go. We're going to finish recording. I'll call you later. That, that's code for mom doesn't like your answer. So we're going to leave now. <laughs> Love you, honey. Love you. Bye, all stars. Bye. 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 <clears throat> so, okay, there's your answer. I uh -huh. did go a little quiet. I okay. did complain a tiny Sounds bit. Sounds like you did a good job. I complained a tiny bit, but I didn't want to ruin it for everyone. And everyone and the girls kept saying to me, mom, this is really fun. And it was one time, like the third day when I said, stop saying that. <laughs> oh my God. Can I, can I ask you all a white person thing? Yeah. Sure. So when you're camping, you're obviously outside and they like to tout the word experience. Right. Did you experience any grizzly bears or wolves? Because you're outside and it's cold and there's heat. And there's yeah. delicious people in this tent. Yes. So it's funny you ask that. Um, it's not bears because there are no bears in that area. But there, it, for no, sure. No grizzlies in Utah. Oh, okay. They, they only come down as far as Montana. They're, they're, they're they're no only, black bears. They're only in Memphis. They're, that's right. <laughs> right. I like it. Um, that's an MBA. Okay. It's an, it's I figured. I got it. I got it. The grizzlies. The grizzlies. Yeah. Okay. Um, but uh, so... I don't know if there's black bears in Zion. I'm not sure. I'm sure there are. Uh, in that area, we were. It was not bears that they were concerned about. It was coyotes, um, raccoons. Um, no wolves. No, no wolves. Um, we did have cows. So there was a. <laughs> oh yeah, there was a cow. The most fearsome creature on earth. Right outside you my had door. Cows. Right outside my door. Like they wear a bell, and we could hear them coming closer and closer. <laughs> now that sounds like a horror movie. You just hear jingle, 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 jingle. by a Holstein. <laughs> so you could go on our Instagram, and you can look at a YouTube short I did. But I open up the door because I'm like uh, the the tent. I open up the tent because I can hear the bell is getting closer and closer. And I said to the kids, "I think the cows are right near. I think the cows are near us." Is what I said. I open up the tent. They're right at the foot of the tent. Literally, a mom, a dad, and a baby. It sounds to me like a missed opportunity for steaks and a better Stop experience. It. They were the cutest cows. They were the cutest cows. They had little bells, little like a cowbell. 
And then they would walk and you would hear the bell. It was awesome. But no, Phil, so to answer your question, there were no wolves, there were no grizzlies, and there were no black bears, but there were coyotes, there were raccoons. We didn't see any of that, though. Um, also, did there's you hear wild coyotes ho- at night? There are horses there, too. So they did tell us that there are wild are, horses. Yes, but we didn't see that. Uh, we did hear coyotes. Want to know why? Okay, tell me why. Because it was muddy snow everywhere and all those animals were hibernating somewhere. Maybe, yeah. Uh, so, um, we did hear coyotes. I think I heard a coyote one night. Okay. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, so the dynamics between, you get asked about the dynamics between everybody. It was fine. fine. I, I, the, ki- the kids tried to make the best of it. We were actually there to go hiking in Zion National yeah. Park. So um, we weren't in the tents a, a lot, but we just couldn't enjoy it. So where did you go? So many hikes in Zion. What did you pick? Okay, so my friend Lori thought it would be a good idea to pick a place called Angel's Landing. And um, come to find out, while I'm there hiking, it's <laughs> one of the 12 most dangerous hikes in the world. It's, 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 no. it's, it's robust, if I remember correctly, uh, reading the guide in the main tent at Under Canvas in Zion. Um, no. Yeah, Angel's Landing is kind of no joke. It was, and you guys picked that one. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, Lori picked that one because she thought that would be a so great hike are, to do. Yeah, in your Nordstrom puffer jacket. Yeah, with my crappy tennis shoes because the hiking shoes you bought me were hitting my toes. So you know what I had on? You know what I had on? I had my Metcons on that are like, oh, I had the new ones. Okay, but you know they're smooth at the bottom, like they're Nike cross training shoes. It's they're all for I had. Lifting. Yeah. So yeah. they're like wearing ice skates. So you might as well just wear on ice skates, scaling on the side of this mountain. <laughs> it was so bad. It was, okay, so first of all, Angel's Landing is a mile high. It's a mile. The elevation is 5,700 feet in the air. (laughs) Phil just says, nope. Nope. (laughs) I'm going to pay $500 a night to feel miserable Mm -hmm. on purpose. And then go on a hike (laughs) where- Come on, guys, you're going to be in the nature. Yeah. And then the hike is 5,000 feet straight up in the air. No, it was so bad. Straight up in the air. Well, you do switch Climbing backs. A cliff side? You do switch backs, but yeah. it's it's horrendous. There's no there's no guardrail. It's steep. There's no guardrail. There's it's no there's no guardrail. And is it steep or is it gradual? It's oh, some steep p- in parts. In parts, it's gradual. It, but I would say it's. But it doesn't matter when there's no guardrail and you're saying how wide is the path? I can't. <sighs> <laughs> how wide is the path? Is it like Sherpa stuff going on up there? Two people. It's two people wide, some parts. Wow. It's two people wide. So, what so you got to hug somebody as they're coming back down? Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. Mm-hmm. No, well, it, was, it was really, really why? bad. Why? I, I don't <laughs> why? know. Phil, I kept saying it the whole time. I kept saying it the whole time. So I'm like, I, did I, I, why am I here? I kept saying this. Why am I doing this? So then um, at one point, I, I had to stop. I kept having to stop because I'm... I'm a normal person. I don't hike for a living. I had to stop to take my breath. You're <laughs> so, a normal person. I like so it. I'm, first of all, the hike is three hours. Let's just get that straight. So it's three hours. It's okay. There's something called the summit or it's, it's, it's called, um, what is it called? Hold on. Did I write it down? Please tell me. Oh, scouts look out. Okay. Scouts, scouts look, look out, out is right before angels landing, which is another part of the hike. The whole thing is four hours, right? It's like, if you just go to Scouts Landing. Four hours. It's three up hours. Up and back. Yeah, yeah, up and back. So round okay. trip, right? All right. Well, you need a permit. That's how high it is. <laughs> you need a permit yeah. to hike. Yeah, You did a hike that you yeah. required you to do a yeah. permit. Yeah, and six- When did you apply for your permit? Oh, Lori did it back in November. Uh-huh, yeah. It Good took morning. six, 16 people have died. There are a oh. lot of inner workings yeah. of this trip that I had no idea what that was going on. Yeah, thank God. If I knew, I, I would have said to Lori, no, I'm not doing it. So what happened is that <laughs> halfway up there, Amanda kept hearing me, like everyone heard me say, can we stop for a minute? Can we stop for a minute? So then Amanda said, halfway up, Amanda goes, I'm not going to go any further. And I'm like, oh, she's just doing this for me. Mm-hmm. Like, she's just doing this for me. So Ellie is like head of the pack, right? Yeah, the little Lori's, college athlete has yeah. to make it to this. Lori's home. right behind her. Mia is in front of me. Keep going. Come on, mom. Come on, mom. And then there's me and Amanda's Mia, right. Yeah, she's such a caregiver. She is. She kept saying. And then at one point I said to Amanda, I need them to stop saying, come on, mom. I need them to stop saying. <laughs> <laughs> so um, Amanda says, I'm not going anymore. 
So then I was like, I can't ruin Amanda's trip. Like I can't because she's doing this for me. So then I said, Amanda, I'll I'll go, I'll stay with you and we can go at our own pace, which really Amanda was saying, I'm going to stay with you, Denise, and we're going to go at your pace, right? Because that's what she was doing. She was being kind? Yes. Or she had had enough as well? No, she was just being nice. Oh, okay. I mean, I think she had had enough, but she Amanda felt bad for way. me. Yes. Mm -hmm. So Ellie and Lori go to the lookout. Like, see ya. See ya. Wouldn't want to be ya. Yep. They're up there, right? And if you've listened to this show, you know I'm deathly afraid of heights. Deathly afraid of heights. Mm -hmm. So I can't look down. So long story short. <laughs> this is awesome. Yeah, long story short, we get to the lookout, right? Long. It takes us forever. Lori and Amanda are already up there. Now they're going to the other part, which Lori is. Lori and Ellie. I'm sorry. Lori and Ellie are up there. Yeah. They're going to the other part, which is the death defying, ridiculous place. So um, now I have to get down. Yeah, that's part of the deal. Getting down was worse than getting up there because my shoes are not made for this. And so you're sliding down. Mm -hmm. I'm sliding. The path. At one point, this guy says to his girlfriend. She gonna die. Yep. <laughs> That's he, he said did. to her, stand back. <laughs> That's what he said to her. <laughs> and he turns around. He's in mid conversation. He goes, I have you. Cause I'm about to, everyone has cleared. Cause I'm not going to make it down. Right. And I said to him, I'm going to fall on you. I'm going to like literally roll on you. And he said, it's okay. There's, he goes, there's a wall right behind me. Cause it was, it came down this way. And uh -huh. like, oh, so if you're watching right on the, YouTube, you can see like, it's coming straight down. Directions. I'm sorry. It was right at the joint of a switchback. Yes. So and you were just about to change directions. He could like, yeah. he could fortify himself against the wall, catch right. you. Right. And you don't have he to He was go young. Over. He was like 30. And I was like, oh my God. And so I just said, give me a minute. I think I, I wanted to sit down on my bottom mm -hmm. and like just scoot down, but nobody was doing that. So I, <laughs> <laughs> so he didn't have to catch me. Thankfully I made it down, but he waited a long time for me to get there. They have a, t a story to tell their kids now. Remember the time you caught that lady mm -hmm. that like hated under canvas? Yeah. And then this couple behind me, this couple that was roughly my age, um, they were right behind me. And I said to them, I'm sorry, I'm holding you up. You can pass. And he goes, oh, we're enjoying this. <laughs> <laughs> so then at one point so you were the activity oh, everybody was watching you put on the show they were and then nice. at one point as i'm going down i don't know why i did this i don't know why i did this i looked mm. i looked and guess what i saw death nothing, nothing. i was so high you up saw air. holy crap don't even oof. i was so high up i saw a trickle that looked like water and then I started doing this thing where I'm like going like waving. Oh. Like I was starting to, what is it, waver? And like my body. Was starting yeah, to pull and I you. start grabbing the rock. Like I'm white knuckled. And Amanda is like looking at me and she's down a little ways. And I yell, I looked, I looked. <laughs> and she goes, don't, don't do it. Look down, look down at your feet. Don't do it. And I'm like white knuckling. And I'm like, and the whole time I'm trying to go to her, I'm almost crawling. And I go, Amanda, I looked, I looked. She goes, okay, we're not going to look anymore. We're not. <laughs> It was horrible. It was horrible. It was so scary. Uh, yeah. That was my trip. That was your trip. I feel bad for you because I was drinking <laughs> bourbon in Tennessee at the time. <laughs> so the or next, Kentucky or wherever. The next day we did something a little more moderate. We rented e-bikes and biked through Zion. That's more your speed. Uh, definitely more my speed. Yeah. So uh, the next day was better. And even the weather was better. We weren't, we could... We didn't see our breath the next day in the tent. It was oh, like, I think it went up to 42 degrees. Was it still raining and all that business? It stopped okay. by the third day. Yeah. Oh, by the third day. Uh-huh. Actually, the second day. What time day, did you get out of there on the third day? 10 a.m. As soon as as soon as soon you could bounce. Yeah. As soon as or was that the cutoff anyway? It was a cutoff, but we were like, we're out of here. We don't want to linger. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, yeah. So that was, that was my spring break girls weekend away. So what's your top five? What's your best part? Oh, here, there's a couple of things. Uh, speaking of uh, top five. Um, okay. I want to go back really quick. I want to tell you some facts about, uh, about Angels oh, yeah. Landing. And yeah, let's do it. Okay. First of all, here's something interesting. When you get to the top of Angels Landing, everyone kind of packs food because you know, you're two hours trying to get there. So you want to take a break. You and, need a granola bar. Right. They don't have any garbage cans. No. Do you know why? Because people litter. No. And the bears. No. And the animals. No. People throw it off the ledge. No. Should I'm asking going? you, I'm not asking you 
if people bring food up there, I'm not saying you that. You're asking said, me why they don't have garbage cans. Well, if people threw it off the edge, they wouldn't need what? a garbage There's, can. No, I'm saying if they... Like, but if they had garbage trash, cans there, people wouldn't throw it over the edge. I just gave you five things. Bears, raccoons, what? No, the answer is no. Why? What? Why don't they have garbage cans? Tell me. How are they going to get them down? Mm, they can't carry the bags down. They cannot. Okay. So here's the thing. That's a. That's like a... Like if you're a hiker or a camper of any sort, it's like you pack in, pack out. Well, there are signs everywhere. Yeah. Okay, but here's the thing. They have porta potties. Oh, they do. How? How do they drain the porta potties? They just pull a plug and let it drain down the mountain? I don't know. That's disgusting. <laughs> so do you see what like blue blue dye like on the You can't didn't. get a porta potty truck up there. How'd they get, they landed it with a, they had to do it with a helicopter, right? Cause I, you know, you're up there thinking like, I, how am I going to get down? How are they going to get this oh my down? God. Can you imagine a porta potty flying over your house? Mm. That would suck. Yeah. So, right. <laughs> they, they have to use, they can't get a porta potty up there. There's no way they could get it up there on the switchbacks. I mean, so, and it, well, like, I mean, they got it up there right? yeah, by helicopter. But my point is how do they change them out? Like, or how do they clean them? I don't know. That's the thing too. I was like, how do they clean them? Because if they that don't, that is disgusting. How do they do it? So anyway, so yeah, so that was. Uh, Did you use it? No. Oh, I took, held it. Should took a picture of it. I know. What the hell? We're a travel. Podcast. <laughs> this is this is I my experience. <laughs> I guess so. You're right. I probably, look. I was just happy I made it. I wasn't thinking about anything with the show. I was. So wait, did Ellie? <laughs> did Ellie and Lori make it all the way to the top? Uh, they made it like halfway to Angel's Landing because Angel's Landing is another hour and like an hour and a half round trip. Okay. And Angel's Landing, if you know anything about this hike, is um, it's literally just you're you're scaling the side of a mountain, and the only thing you have holding on to is a chain, a chain that yeah, it's a chain that they uh huh yeah, it's a chain, legitimately a chain, and you can see a picture of it. We'll the post Joe one. and Tony like uh, connected to the mountain like forty seven years ago. Yeah, uh, we'll post a picture of people holding onto the chain to go up. I have a little video of it of people coming up and down. I have people with babies in their arms doing angels landing. So did you I take photos of this. I did. Ooh. Yeah, I haven't posted it yet. I have to blur out their face. You do. Um, I'd where, rather where? go. I'd rather think, go to prison. I think it's child endangerment. What? I'd rather go to prison. Oh, then what? Then do angels landing? Then do angels. Whatever landing. experience you did for <laughs> three days. Do you know the things they do in prison? Though, are you sure you pick prison? I would not want to hike up a, a mountain every day. No, or sleep outside with coyotes and cows. Are you sure? Every <laughs> day in so prison or cows. every day of outdoor Zion. It, you would pick prison? Yes. <laughs> he, sound, he sounds pretty definite. He's not really. I get, like, I get a bed. It's it's there's it's AC or heated. I get three me- hot meals. Three hot. I get to cot. I get to work out. I get to a library. I can fill out my trivia card in there if I wanted to. Yeah, you could. <laughs> I, I bet there are a lot, there yeah. are a lot of trivia rounds of trivia yeah. in prison. I can do anything. Listen this to the radio. This is a really YouTube. good sales pitch. Like the good sales pitch yeah. for prison versus Zion. Hey, you know what? You want to hear what? Want to hear what else? It's free. <laughs> it is not for us. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's that's really funny. I think I think what do I pay for what do I pay for inmates a year in my taxes? Isn't it like oh. something crazy like each inmate is like three hundred thousand dollars a year or something like that? Yeah. Yeah. Um uh so it's about the same as going to under canvas. <laughs> <laughs> and with Phil, according to Phil, better. Better. Yes. Yeah. Um, All right, yeah. Back to stats. Angels landing. Okay. So I just I mentioned. Okay. You I I already said sixteen deaths as of twenty twenty three. Um, elevation. I that. Yeah. Oh. Sixteen deaths. You didn't hear me just say last that. Last year. Period. I, I missed I'm, it. Sorry. Earlier. You didn't hear me say that. I mean. You're probably talking over me. This, you were talking over me. Is this? <laughs> is are we going to do this married game right now? <laughs> um. My wife says I don't listen to her and something else I forget. I well, know. it says <laughs> as of 2023, there's 16 deaths. So I don't know if that means from like 2019 to 2023. There, I don't know what the time frame is. It just says as of 2023, 2023, 2023, 16 deaths. And guess what? There's a huge sign before you enter Angel's Landing that tells you all about it. And it says a number of deaths mm. and they always have a number. <clears throat> it was blacked out. Ooh, yeah. that's a lot of deaths. It was blacked out. Amanda said it said 14 two years ago. 
Okay. <laughs> so it's like it's like the the how many days since the previous yeah, work injury? Since, uh, yeah, the workplace uh, <laughs> workplace injury. Oh, really? We've had it? yeah. If you like, if you ever work in an industrial area, they have a sign up that says it's been thirty two days since an industrial accident. Really? Yeah. So oh. let me Just to remind you, people to be safe. Let me ask you a real question though. Like, how if any other type of vacation experience had that many fatalities? How in the hell were they open? Oh, because the way that national parks work is that you enter at your own risk. Everyone knows this. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So it's pretty well, like it's everywhere. It's on every website. It's on your ticket. You're literally entering at your own risk. Um, If you get attacked by a bear, they will not shoot the bear. They don't do that in national parks. They'll like, shoot you. They'll be like, sorry, we, you, yeah, know, you know, like, you know, there's we, bears here. We need to put you out of your misery. Yeah. So it's pretty well established that you're entering like at that your own movie risk. that uh, the kid was the guy. What was it? Oh, God. The one actor that was in um, that, that 70s show. What's his name? Ashton Kutcher. Yeah. Wasn't he? Which one was in? Oh, is the other guy. The I get them. Topher Grace. What's that? Toe for Grace? No, no. Oh, um, white guys look alike. 129 hours or 127. The guy that cut oh. his arm off or whatever. Who was the actor in that? Frank. James Franco. Oh, James Franco. Uh-huh. Yeah. <laughs> They're the same actor. They are. You've never seen them in the same place <laughs> at the same time. They don't look anything alike. But yeah. <laughs> Okay. Anyway. Um, but yeah, he had to cut off his arm and he was a super experienced guy. And that was also that was also in Utah. No, I think it was in Arizona, I thought. I thought it was in Arizona, but I could be wrong. Maybe it was Utah, but I thought yeah. Arizona. Anyway, so it just proves Phil's point that mm-hmm. anywhere, anywhere with that many fatalities. But I mean, I guess you could drown in Hawaii, you know? Oh, I'm sure there's a lot of deaths in Hawaii that they yeah. don't talk about because they want tourists to still come. Disney World. I think there's a lot of deaths in Disney People World. People die in Disney World. Oh, yeah. okay. Well, so that was my weekend. So the best, the best part. I don't have a top What's five. What's the best part? The e-bikes. Leaving. <laughs> no, I enjoyed the e-bikes because we had the whole park to ourselves on Sunday because it was such bad weather. There weren't very many people there. Okay. And when you are on a bike and you're going through Zion, there's a lot of roads that are closed only to the buses. Oh, yeah. So you have the whole road to yourself. It's just you and the shuttle buses. Right. So that was pretty incredible. Like we were going past deer. We were the views were amazing. I mean, yeah. just amazing. It's a gorgeous. It's a gorgeous and park. along the way, I saw some really beautiful, easy hikes, easy hikes mm-hmm. that families were doing. And I was like, why didn't we do that one? Like, just why didn't we do that one? What okay. what literally classifies a hike as a hike? Like, what what are the criteria, parameters? What's a oh, hike? Because if I walk to 7-Eleven, that's a hike, right? Well, you know what? That's it's subjective. Walk. Oh, no. It's subjective. You just said he walked. Did you, I said that's a walk. Did, did you go up a hill? Because that can be considered a hike. I mean, maybe if I'm in, in like Claremont. Is there an incline? <laughs> um, I think it's subjective, honestly, because I've I've seen people say, I love I love how people call this trail a hike, and this is nothing but a path in the woods. And other people would call it a hike. So true hikers would call Angel's Landing a real hike. Um, yeah. The walk that like a family does in Zion that's on a dirt path is probably just a walk. But if you're four years old, it's a hike. It is. So So there's got to be some degree of elevation no. or, or just uh, exertion. Think, yes. Is it 100 degrees out when you walk to 7-Eleven? That could be considered a hike. Mm, okay. Yeah. I mean, you know? for me, it's it's completely different than it is for him that it would be for my girlfriend, Lori, or my girlfriend, Lisa. Um, if my feet is 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 hitting are thank you if my feet are is is if my feet are hitting either dirt gravel um it could be blacktop but i have to be covered in trees that's a hike okay got it so we could be in central park but if i'm covered in trees i'm hiking <laughs> So you're going through a hike in Central Park. Uh-huh, yeah. There are parts of Central. Well, oh, anyway, whatever. I know. So I don't know. So I think it's just it's just what you consider to be exertion for you, I would say. Yeah. yeah. So you know what? A walk to 7-Eleven could very well be a hike. Yeah. Good. So if it's easy, it's a walk. If there's any degree of difficulty, you could call it a hike. All right. So there you go. Use it well, as a fat excuse. That's right. Oh, yeah. If you're fat, it's Man, a hike. I hiked to the bathroom earlier. <laughs> <laughs> Such a long journey. I'm so tired. That's right. That's right. I need some water. Yeah. Uh-huh. Um, okay. So you said the best part. What was the worst part? Oh, yeah. Uh, ooh. That's a tough one. It's either the tent or the hike. 
What did you guys eat while you were there? We oh, left forget about out. the food. It wasn't even. It was just. Did fine. you just eat at the little? Yeah, resort we ate at the, the resort. Time? It was fine. It was nothing special. You didn't go we into went, town. For yeah, food we went into town. We went to a pizza place. It was fine. Yeah, no, none of those. I no. mean, they, they don't. They're not doing five star dining at um, no, no, Zion. It's, it's, There's just it's not. Basically, it's like Shakey's Pizza. They're or, like catering to people who are in and out who yeah. want who need a lot of carbs because they've just burned like ten thousand calories. Yeah. Uh, so it's just basic stuff: pizza, ice cream. You know, okay. nothing special. Not worth talking about. No. Uh, food was good, but it wasn't like, you know, anyway, I've uh, got a, I've got a very important question though. Yeah. So I'm sure the audience is probably wondering this question. Did you at least fill out that trivia card? <laughs> did you win? We did fill it out. Um, we didn't win because people were on their phones and we we're very, um, what's the word? Competitive. Yes. You went and by the also rules. we went by the rules. So what's the word authentic? So uh, ethical. Ethical. We you didn't do, look at our phones. Okay. So we gave probably the wrong answers. Like later we handed it in, we looked up, we're like, oh, some of these were not right. So Did you even have cell phone coverage. Obviously somebody had a good plan um, if they were on their phones. Yeah. And the tent you sort of did. I mean, I kind of was like not even happy about writing it in because I felt like if I handed it in, I was approving their activity. And yeah. I didn't even want she did, to do that. She, she didn't do it in protest. So. Yeah. No. So I was kind of in protest. I was like, why are we even doing this? And Lori's like, come on. <laughs> so yeah so right. the worst part i think was the tent okay i kind of knew the hike would be hard i didn't think the tent would be so crappy okay yeah fair enough yeah so your girls weekend sounds a lot different than boys weekend oh you know it's funny you say that i don't know a boys weekend that would be like this i have to say because most any any guy i've known that's done a boys weekend they do Vegas or golfing. Usually, yes. I've never met a guy who's guys, like, I'm going to go hiking for well, a guy's Well, they do like weekend. whitewater rafting or something, but there's no way they would go to, you know, camp in Utah in March. They'd be like, Mar like, why would we go there? Let's go to Mexico or let's go to Florida or Key West or something like that or some resort somewhere. All or right. like you said, Vegas. I mean, Vegas is, you know, the quintessential uh, guy's trip weekend, you know. If you're going to do a guy's weekend, where would you go? You already mentioned it. Vegas. Vegas. Uh, I just started golfing, so I would do golfing. Okay. Um, it has to have some, some element of danger. Has to be present, but if you were a bunch of guys, we probably cause that danger anyway. Truth. Because alcohol will be involved. Right. So we could just do anything. Alcohol and, and then like we're drunk. wheeling in the desert. Yeah. yeah. Some, something exhilarating. Uh, you know, gasoline, gasoline's involved. Usually gasoline. That's, gasoline Wait, that's and great. alcohol. Gasoline yeah. and vodka, yeah. Yeah. So who do you think has the more debaucherous weekends? Men. Uh, oh, okay. Now, when you mean debauchery, debaucherous, is there like a level? Because I think our perspective of debauchery is, is maybe different. Do you think so? Maybe. Yes, because I think when women think of, of a man doing debauchery I, I think they're thinking it's sexual oh for sure you don't no. think girls do that Guy? on girls weekends not for the most part oh, okay you don't know my friends <laughs> oh, <wow. laughs> All right. but curious just to think like what you think mm -hmm. like who do you think is the more I party think animal i definitely think it's guys guys go crazy not necessarily with i mean sure they go to strip clubs and they do all that stuff because you know it feels debaucherous to do that, but um, not even not even infidelity or anything like that per se. But it's just the amount of alcohol poured onto a guy's weekend versus oh. a girl's weekend. Okay, it's you know it's the morning, wake up, go down to the pool, crack them open right away. It's nine thirty a.m. in Vegas. You know who spends more money? The guys. Oh, all right. In Vegas, I yeah. would say the guys as well, because they're gambling, they're paying bar tabs, they're going to the strip club. I mean, come on, that knocks you out of the box right there. Yeah, you're like, right. Unless it's bachelor party weekend. No, for we're not talking woman. about that. We're just like, yeah. but I'm just saying, I'm talking about oh, it. Oh, okay. It's my show too. <laughs> <laughs> I'm saying unless it's bachelorette weekend or something like that, I don't think women throw the same amounts of cash or alcohol onto a situation like a bunch of guys do. Okay, I have a question. When you guys, when guys do a weekend away, do you ever have that one guy that's like, hey guys, we probably shouldn't be doing this? Yes. Or do you really? Because yeah. they, they, they depict mm -hmm. that in every single movie. Like, so come on. Uh, I'm just, you know, at like 1.30 in the morning, they're like, guys, I'm just going to, I'm going to head back. I'm that guy. 
Are you really? Are you? Yeah. I've been that guy. I've been more that often guy. than not, I've been the other guy. No, nah, because a lot of my friends are white, and y'all be doing some stupid stuff <laughs> that'll know. end up getting me killed. So I'm like, y'all, uh-uh, that's, I ain't playing that game. That's a game. very good point. <laughs> that I'm is out. a good point. That is a very good point. <laughs> if anybody's going to take the fall in a group of guys, mm -hmm. and it's a bunch of white guys and you, I hate to say it. Yo, let me. I, so I'll tell you a quick story. Uh, we were street racing <clears throat> one day, and uh, I'm in the back seat, right? I am in literally the back seat of the car. We get pulled over. The cop comes to me and asks me questions. And you then my friends driving. Yeah, and then my, and then my friends are egging on the cops. Like, why did you say something to him? He's the one in the back seat. He's not even and I'm just sitting. I'm like, shut up, man! Y'all gonna get me killed? Right, because they're gonna get the cops. Gonna get mad at them, and yeah. then he's gonna take it out on you. Yeah, oh, I was in the back seat. Never even thought about yeah, that. So yeah, mm. it's good that you're that guy. Now that you mention it. Mm -hmm. See, things you don't think about when you're whitey. Okay, so has there ever been a situation where you guys have been on a boys weekend and somebody wants to cheat and you're like, ah, oh, you shouldn't do that? Broke how up. many how many drinks uh, how many drinks and where are you? Cuz what happens in Vegas stays in Vegas. So, uh, um bro code. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> you answered my question. You yeah. totally answered my question. I've never seen that happen. No. Never. And what? for the most Stop part, it. They, for the Stop most it. part, Stop it. they won't even remember who you don't think so. With the amount of alcohol that happens. No, they won't remember. Okay. Do you I, I will say if you're in a group of six or eight people, four, five, six people, if you're in a group of three or four people, everybody in the group will know. But if you're in the group of like eight people, not every guy there will know. And you already would know your, if your boy already does that, because I wouldn't be the first time he's True. done that anyway. Oh, that's a good point. Yeah. I never even thought of that. So I mean, there's, uh, she's not going to do a one-off in Vegas is what you're saying. Mm -mm. Nobody does a uh, one-off in Vegas. In Laurel, Mississippi, if he's going to cheat in Vegas. So nine I just, times out of ten. Oh, I didn't know if it was like the allure of Vegas. Like, I'm away. She's not going to know. There's pretty girls here who are also away. You know, because it's like there's, you know, there's groups of guys that are away and there's groups of wives that are away too. So it's like, True. you know, like who's going to find out kind of thing. But, dude, it's like you can go to a brothel. You can, it. but don't you think it's, I mean, isn't it more scandalous to like not pay for it and hook up with somebody that you'll never see again? Oh, you're paying for it regardless. Ah, uh, that's true. <laughs> that's a good point. That's a good point. Huh. Okay. Good. Yeah. To, a lot of you learn, learn a lot here on this show. <laughs> Do you remember that? Did you really learn a lot? You, you, ha you suspect all this stuff, right? Kind of, but I, you know, look, I know plenty of girls that did shady stuff on girls weekends and sure. i you know i don't know i just i was you know who spends the most money just curious like you know i think girls right. spend girls tend to do the spa weekends they do like when they're those, doing vegas those rack up yeah women at women activities cost more on purpose that's true y'all will spend more because a a lot of times you're not paying for it so they're just like well, who's racking up <laughs> yep that's yeah. true that's mm. very true um do you remember the one time that i went away on a girls weekend in vegas I was the only white girl. Oh, wow. I was the only white girl. And we have black friends, Phil. Okay? <laughs> oh. <laughs> um, and they were adamant that you could not bring, like they were like no boyfriends, no husbands, nothing. And James snuck in. He he took a separate flight and everything. This. Yeah. He was like, I want to go. And I'm like, you can't. And he's like, no, I want to go. And I said, if I get caught, like with you here, they are going to be so mad at me. And he's like, I'll fly a separate flight. He's like, I just want to hang in Vegas too. So he actually did his own thing. But I was petrified that we were going to run into him. Like if we ran into, everybody knows him. So if we awesome. ran into him, oh, they were it's like. It's not like I'm hard to see in a crowd, you know? <laughs> So I kept saying to him, do not go here. We're going here. Do not go here. We're going here. Uh -huh. Yeah, she was texting me the whole time. But I would go to like the spa. Oh. I, I actually went to like Wait, the sauna. I, just... I was smoking cigars, having gin and tonics. That's pretty rad. Okay, though. no. Can I just say I came back to our room and there were bags from like shopping. And I was like, what oh, yeah. is happening here? I remember I bought a sport coat. Uh -huh. I did a bunch of stuff there. Yeah, it was great. Uh, <laughs> it was it was the actually the perfect trip because, that you know, cool. I could like go at my own pace. I gambled. Uh, there was nobody there to stop me, really. And uh, then I got to come home to the room at night, and there was sweet romance waiting. Stop, there was not. 
There was and, not. And there were no kids around. So uh, it was a perfect getaway for both of us. Yeah, it was actually, I had a great time that weekend. I remember that. Yeah, it was, it was really, it was fun. Um, that was the And first. I did not impede your fun. No, you actually record. didn't. So no. yeah. So this I, is- I legit just used your hotel room. Yeah. And you went shopping and gambled and had yourself a good time. I did. Yeah. The trip did cost us like three times as much. Just uh, because you were there. Can, yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. anyway, so that was my girl's trip. Yeah. So are you going to go on a boy's trip now? Uh, I don't know. That's do you a good have, question. Do you have boys? Do you have boys? And they're kind of all scattered around the country now. Okay. Like, you know, I've been on the loose for a while and I keep touch with people. I don't know. I did my boy's trip last summer, I guess. I went to Egypt with Bill. Yeah. Perfect. Perfect travel partner. That was good. No, I haven't done any big group things. You should try under canvas on a boys trip and see how that goes. Well, I would definitely not go in March and winter. And that would be weird anyway. Let's all go glamping. Guys don't do that. Dudes. Yeah, guys no. don't do that. If we're going to do that, we're going to hire a tour guide and they're going to take us deep into the mountains of Idaho and we're going to go trout fishing or something like that. That sounds more fun. Yeah. Or whitewater rafting. I yeah, was starting like to you say said. it earlier. Yeah. That'd be fun. Um, okay. okay. But yeah. So you think you, we didn't ask you, what do you think? Do you think the girls trip is more debaucherous than the guys? Oh, you didn't ask me. Uh, guys, I think it's equal only because girls don't talk about what they do on their trips. Oh. Guys kind of talk about it a little bit. Like they'll be in a group. So I think it's probably the same. I have to be honest with you. They girls, girls don't generally consume the same amount of alcohol. So Phil's right about that. Uh, they don't, they don't consume, like they just aren't built the way to, taking the alcohol like men are right. um i think things happen oh wow okay. yeah that sounds mysterious i like it <laughs> maybe not <laughs> i don't know if you will <laughs> okay well we're gonna leave it at that i think we've wrapped up this topic don't you yeah i do all right let's take them out empty nest full tank check the mic and make sure it sound right boy